we're back. Part two of my presentation of my 21 days experimentation on geopolymer, trying to replicate the ancient masonry of all the ancient temples close to Cusco. So here, April 24th, was pretty much the beginning of my experimentation. Those are the first recipes, geopolymer recipes that I've done. And you have a little bit of um, like uh, knowledge here in the picture, not much, but you can tell that they, they have different texture. And here we have a little video explaining the, the materials and the quantities, but keep in mind, this is pretty much the first day of my experimentation. So <laughs> the quantities that you're going to see in this video, I've changed a lot during this experimentation, especially in the natron and the lime powder. I've upgraded the quantities by a factor of 10 at least. Sandstones from Cayamarca. This is three grams of lime powder. This is one gram of natron salt, 50 milliliters. So now let's go to the next day, April 25th. So now I have made some new recipes this next day. My goal at the beginning of the experimentation was to find the perfect recipe, the perfect geopolymer recipe to then go on and experiment with the molding techniques. But you will see down the line that I was lacking a lot of knowledge because there is one thing in the geopolymer chemistry that is on your side or not on your side, depending if you have it, it's called time. And the geopolymer needs quite a lot of time. It's not a lot of time in a lifetime, but it's a lot of time if you only have a month to do an experimentation. And to, to have a geopolymer that become rock solid, you need, I would say, two months. And I was there for only a month. So I quickly understood that and I switched direct direction, switched the focus of the experimentation. But still, I will keep showing you the first part because it's important. There's lots of knowledge also to learn here. And then the next part where the background becomes purple is where I start to focus on the molding technique. So April 25th, again, this is just a comparison. Um, when I was doing some samples, I was doing the mix. This is weathered sandstone geopolymer uh, in uh, alkaline medium. So I've poured this one 30 minutes after I've made the mix. And this one on the left, I've poured it right after the mix. So you can tell that this looks a lot better. Now April 26, that was the next day. The, I was doing some uh, compression tests with the samples, but here now I'm, I'm presenting this <laughs> after doing the experimentation and doing more research. I can tell that I was doing some very rookie mistakes because why do a, <laughs> why do a compression test or a, a to like, test the consistency of your sample if the samples needs time for it to bind together. So it was very, very much like a, a rookie mistake. But still, I'm sharing with all of you. I have nothing to hide. I'm a open book. I'm just sharing the experimentation that I've done. Now I tried to do some um, andesite samples in many days. <laughs> uh, 
and I've put them in some bags because during my experimentation, I, I kept on studying. And one of the day that I decided to take the day off because every day I was doing recipes and nothing was working. I thought nothing was working, but I was just lacking knowledge. I was studying more on Joseph Davidovitz and his uh, geopolymer phosphate base. And I saw this knowledge that the exothermic reaction will happen a lot quicker and a lot better if the samples are stored in higher temperature. So if you store your samples in 80 degrees C, then you will have a very good exothermic reaction. And you can tell like if you store it in 50 degrees C, the exothermic reaction is very low. So that's what I did the next day. I tried to do some samples and put them in the oven so this is not hot, like it's only a couple degrees, probably 50, 60, 70, 80 degrees. But here I was working with what I had and this oven wasn't digital. So I wasn't able to say what temperature exactly. And also after doing this, I was thinking back and I, it wasn't a good idea because the ancient temples, let's say Sacsayhuaman or Kenko or uh, uh, Pisac, Tipon, Pucapucara, Tumba Machai, all those sites around Cusco, they do not reach temperature at that level. So it doesn't make any sense to try to heat up my samples. It's not in link with the ancient temples. The ancient temples were in the ambient temperature that was in nature and I should work with the elements just like they did so April 30 I figure out I am missing some geopolymer knowledge I think because not one simple is rock solid yet what to do now the thing is I was missing a lot of knowledge and after the experimentation I got in touch with uh, Joseph Davidovitz and he told me a lot and I figured out that I was missing a lot of knowledge. But the fact was that time is something that is very useful when working with geopolymer because the geopoly geopolymeration is happening on a period of two months, mas o menos, like, uh, yeah. So I need time. So I decided because I had only close to 18 days left, I decided to change the focus of the experiment. Now I will focus on the molding techniques. So this is what concludes part two of my presentation of my 21 days experimentation. I hope you liked it. Come back for part three and we will start this subject, which is the molding technique experiment so this part was a lot more fun because i didn't had to have some geopolymer knowledge that much all i had to use was my imagination and put myself in the shoes of the ancients and work with the elements how could it, they have done the molding to make those beautiful beautiful masonry like in Sacsayhuaman? So thank you for listening to part two. I will see you in part three. Hopefully you come back for part three because there's tons of knowledge. Even more, 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 more interesting than the first parts. So I'll see you in part three. Thank you for listening. Hablamos pronto. Adios.